Attention shoppers, clean up on aisle 14. Clean up on aisle 14. Someone dropped a jar of pickles. 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 Beatboxing at a big box store. Surprising. What's not surprising? How much you could save by switching to Geico. A red minivan has the lights on in the parking lot. Geico. 15 minutes could save you 15% or more. Geico. This is the Dan Levator Show with the Stugatz Podcast. UCF should be the national championship. Everyone in sports should be ashamed of themselves. They should be the national champion. But hold on. <laughs> Just slow down. Uh. We've got a problem around the show here. Greg Cody of the Miami Herald in with us today in that I want to spend the entire show today celebrating the championship of the University of Central Florida. Unfortunately, no one wants to cooperate with me, including the University of Central Florida, who's not returning our messages. As I say, I want to turn this day into you won the national championship. You went undefeated. Nobody's better than perfect. You're the most perfect. You did it with a dude who's got one hand, but nobody's picking up the phone. Hmm. Like, we want to go have a, a parade at UCF. We want to go give them a trophy out of Mike's garage that is a fantasy trophy that's a little <laughs> bit broken and is three feet tall. But it's a trophy. And we want to do it, but nobody is cooperating with this. So I can't. If you're not familiar with the, what that music is, we did it after the Heat won championships. We swayed. We made jokes. We made fun of everybody. I can't do it if no one agrees with me on this and no one will support this cause. Let's be clear. We did it before the Heat won any championships. We did it when LeBron oh, simply announced true. he was coming that's down true. here. That's yes. true. That's true. But <laughs> can someone please help me with this? Because I've got things written down, but no one is supporting really? me. No one. Is, there's no <laughs> one around here down. because UCF just, be, UCF just beat the, the only team that beat the two teams that are playing for the championship. UCF is the only undefeated team in the country. And again, they are doing it with a dude who has one hand. Like, how can you not hand him the trophy? Put the trophy in that hand. You're going to give it to Nick Saban again? Honestly. It's it's infuriating. Yeah, I just don't care as much. Yeah. It's not, it's not doing anything for right. me. I watched it. I was rooting against him the entire time. Yep. <laughs> we all were. No one wants to deal with this. No, hold on a second. Hold on. Hold on. Go to Orlando, hold on. Everyone show. slow down. I, I got to run a car. I don't want to go to Orlando. All right. This That's a closer the, commute hold, for me, actually. Wait a minute. Were you guys actively rooting? Were you guys actively rooting against UCF yesterday just because you didn't want me to be right about saying that they were the best team in the country? Yeah, 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 yeah. Yes, we were. Yeah, yeah. yeah. all of us, yeah. no yeah. doubt. Yeah, yeah. because there's more work other. involved, right? Because we'd have to fly. Miami's the only warm fly. place fly. in the United fly. States. Fly. 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 fly, See, there's your first mistake. Yeah, we'd have to go to Orlando. Yeah, the Magic Kingdom. Magic, because Scott Frost used to work there. You got to be kidding me with this guy, Saban. Do it from 0 12 after losing to Furman <laughs> two years ago. 0-12 losing to Furman, linebacker with one hand. Yeah. Now they're the only undefeated team in the country. They didn't even get to play in the playoff. Didn't even get to play. Like, that system is bogus. And ESPN is irresponsible for making it a legitimate championship. <laughs> for paying to make it a legitimate televised championship when one of the teams has been denied. Yeah. Still don't care, man. Still don't. Yeah. yeah. Four teams are pretty good. That made it. Oh, yeah. Can I persuade you guys by just screaming and stuff? But now I'm nervous. I don't want to. I, I don't want to do this because nobody supports it. Let's try it. We don't want you to do it either, man. All right, hold on. Let's you, try it. You would have an argument if you said that they deserve to be playing for the national. Well, but champion. they didn't get the chance, so we'll never know. Now, all I know is that they beat the team you guys were telling me was the SEC representative that could beat Alabama and Georgia because they did. And so now you got two teams playing for the championship. One of which that didn't even play in a championship game. And you got these guys left out, and the only reason they're left out is because they come out of nowhere. Like, you're you're allowed in sports to come out of nowhere and win. They were not allowed by the rules to come out of nowhere and win. They were not. That team could have been the most surprising national champion in the history of football. No doubt. Right. College basketball affords you. I mean, Jay Bill has tweeted about this yesterday. Affords you that opportunity where you can come out of nowhere and win a national championship. But here's the problem. This team was wronged and evidently it doesn't care all that much. It was wrong because I want to spend all three hours of ra of the radio show today celebrating that that team wins and everyone else loses and nobody wants to do it with me. The fallacy is that the college football playoff was going to end all argument. Everything was going to be won on the field. There's always going to be an argument. The number five ranked team is always going to have an argument. There's always going to be a UCF. 
Mike, I don't have the proper confidence. I have the confidence of my conviction in doing a rant to celebrate UCF. I do not have confidence that I have the room backing me. Oh, you've lost the room. Yeah. Yeah. You've lost the room. I need the room backing me. I can't do it right. I can't yell and have the right energy. I need you guys laughing at the jokes. You guys just see more work coming down the pike because we all have to go to UCF to hand them a trophy that they don't want. So look at you and laugh nervously. Yeah. We're good at that. Be brave, man. I can Plus, muster, solo. Yeah, I can muster can, something out for you. Man. Can you want to pretend you're great? We can do that. Yeah. I'll, I'll fake it. it. Made a career of doing it. <laughs> Weren't you saying all these things about USF? Until they lost. <laughs> I was. I was. I was saying it. And then they lost to Houston, and I had to change the UCF to the best team in the state. You just assume we forgot about the USF. Yeah. Thing, Are know? we going to get anyone from their team on our show? Not looking like it. No. Uh, They're not helping us. I mean, we can't go proclaim them the national championship champions on behalf of ESPN. Allison's just spoken to somebody. Here's what's happened, I think, with UCF is you were alone on this front before the game. Right. You were a pioneer. You right. were trailblazing. And you were seeing things that other people weren't seeing. And now that they beat Auburn, everyone is on the bandwagon right. saying right. UCF does right. So they don't need you anymore. They have Jay Billis. <laughs> okay. Yeah. No, I don't know where you guys got that they're ignoring or that they're all in. I just spoke to the SID. Okay. All right. If you want the 80, he's available. I don't I'll know. I'll take you do. And I want to flood the marketplace with UCF thoughts today because this team is getting jobbed and ESPN is sitting here playing a national championship among teams that, that aren't, that don't have the resume this one does. That UCF beat more bowl teams than Alabama. Yep. Beat more bold teams than Alabama. UCF is the only team in the country that's undefeated. Like, this whole system is bogus. The whole system is a giant fraud when an undefeated perfect team it doesn't isn't allowed by rule to even compete for the championship. That doesn't make any sense. It's completely illogical. Um, it doesn't make any sense. It's wrong. It needs to be fixed. But the only way to fix it is to expand it. But that's it. it. No, it's the no, only, no, no, Dan, because that's why Scott Frost leaves UCF because he he doesn't think he has any opportunity of getting to the I, final I, four. I, I am saying that the Monday, <laughs> you guys are going to watch it. It's going to be a big national celebration, and that Monday championship doesn't matter. The best team has been decided by resume, and we're just playing another game that's a friendly. That we're going to turn into the one that matters when the team that has the best resume has been denied the championship by rule uh, because the whole measurement system is so bogus in that sport. Shaquem Griffin at 1130. Look, all these things are starting to flood in because of that rant that you yeah. really brought home with a Milton Berle I got more. Joke. I got more bad jokes here. More Milton Berle jokes? I'm sweating. <laughs> <laughs> well, you've worked hard this segment. <laughs> ESPN Radio. I, I have so many notes. Hopefully we won't get to that. <laughs> Don Lebatard. How much career does Greg Cody have left? Just over three hours. Very little, believe me. Stugatz. If my career were a round of golf, I would say I have teed off on the 18th hole. <laughs> I'm in the I'm in the rough. <laughs> Man, am I in the rough? You've already teed off, though. You say I've teed off. You yeah. have about four or five shots left. Yeah, well, six or seven. <laughs> right, okay. I get that. <laughs> teed off. He's you're about just, to take a drop. Oh yeah. No, I sliced it into Mrs. McGillicuddy's condo, and it bounced into the lake, and now I'm trying to find it. I got scuba gear. It's Sad. This is the Don Lebatar Show with the Stugats on ESPN Radio. Our thanks to the new grandfather and congratulations to Christopher Cody and Roy Bellamy. Babies being made all over the place. So many people having sex. <laughs> and so Greg Cody is now a grandfather. Here I am. And congratulations to him. He sounds thrilled about the situation. We've got a legitimate <laughs> problem am. here mm -hmm. around the show today. Legitimate issue in that. The athletic director for Central Florida will be on with us in 40 minutes. Great. And I have now sabotaged everything that we're trying to do today with my quest, my crusade to bring shame upon college football and Kirby Holcutt and Condoleezza Rice. If she's still doing it, even though she's probably not, she gets some <laughs> residual shame from just everything that happened here, that they're playing a championship on Monday on this you know, sponsored by this network, paying God knows how much money for that game, and it's a bogus championship because it was won yesterday in the game before the one you noticed yesterday. It, it, the game before the one that all of you cared about and was fun and went to overtime and, wee Georgia and Oklahoma, the one that you cared about, it was a great game. I can't dispute that. The one before that decided the national championship, and I'm confused why no one agrees with me. <laughs> <laughs> like, it's just because the construct is, hey, the championship is on Monday. But if I put all these resumes, if if I put all these resumes in front of you 
and I took off the uniforms, the teams, the coaches, and didn't give you anything other than the information, everyone would be voting UCF as the national champion of college football today. If they had to pick among the three teams that, if they had to pick among the two that are playing on Monday and UCF, and UCF, everyone, if you didn't have access to the reputations of the teams, everyone would be saying that UCF is your national championship champion. But the tension that we have around here is that Chuck Pagano has been fired. Uh, the, the Browns went 0 16. Rob Manfred, I'm not done with you. Like, I'm not done with you. I know we left you last year, but I'm not done with baseball here. And I've sort of fired up the troops here to make sure that we make fun of baseball because last we left, we were getting in an argument with the commissioner of baseball and he was telling something, saying something that wasn't accurate. And I called him on and he got angry. And then there were reports that he was calling executives. So we've got a lot to do, a lot to catch up on. And NFL playoffs are coming up this weekend. Uh, the greatest game in the history of college football played yesterday. Not That's right, game. it was. And this is all That's right, it was do. played yesterday, and you guys don't want to talk about it. Right. Well, the no, Peach we Bowl was the greatest game ever played. <laughs> the greatest and most unjust game ever played. Put it on the poll, Guillermo. Was the Peach Bowl the greatest and most unjust game ever played? But we have a week's worth of content we need to get into, and you've just sabotaged this entire show already. All of it. Can't wait to talk to the athletic director, whose name I don't know. It. Uh, it's Danny White. Eleven Eastern. I do I mean, need to even set the, the name is boring. I do need to set the record straight on Condi Rice. She is no longer on the committee, so you can continue to blame her for seeing weapons of mass destruction in Iraq that weren't there, but you cannot blame her for jilting UCF. Yep. What the hell did you just do to the show? Well, Set the record straight. Made a great point, and that's Thank a fine. Yeah. What's a fine? Well, you got a committee member wrong. Uh, she was a committee member. Don Lebertard. Will you sometimes call your childhood telephone number? We all do. We all do? Thank you. Yeah, I think Greg was saying he does Greg, it as well. Feel free to do speak it. into the microphone instead of that ther- thermos you're drinking out of. Right. Because you're on the radio. <sighs> we all do. Stugats. All right, I changed my mind. Do the rest of the show. Yeah. Into the Better it enhances you. Yeah, yeah, do your whole the show into the, the, the metal third. You never know. <laughs> this is the Don Lebatar Show with the Stugats on ESPN Radio. Guillermo, put it on the poll. Before you die, will there be an app that exercises for you? Before you die, will there be an app? That exercises for you. I want to ask you guys something off of one of the games last night, and we will be talking to the real national champions throughout the show today. Uh, congratulate the athletic director at UCF for his national championship. Bring on Shaquem Griffin, uh, the one, the bad mofo, one-handed. I, I can't believe what that kid does. I really can't. I am in awe, and I, I'm legitimately ashamed that I didn't vote him for the Heisman Trophy. He should have won the Heisman Trophy this year with all these silly arbitrary measurements, a guy out there with one hand playing at the level he was playing for as the defensive stalwart on on a on a undefeated championship team. But what I wanted to ask you guys, did you guys watch the Alabama-Clemson game? Yeah. I got mad at Dabo again, and I get mad at Dabo quite a bit because you do a lot of the Bible thumping, and I'm here to teach the kids. And what I saw yesterday happening in Alabama-Clemson very early on is like, oh, Alabama knows all the plays. You got nothing. You got nothing. Dabo, you have nothing. And so what does he do? Yell as his quarterback. And I'm like, oh, that's weak. Look, you're getting exposed, and we're all watching this, Dabo. Nick had a month to prepare for this, and you have nothing on offense. There is nothing you can do. So what does he do? He gets frustrated and screams at his quarterback. The quarterback who got him to where he is this season. Right. After the other – the only way – Nick Saban's always got the best players. The only way to come close to beating him is to have – the guy who was about to take over the NFL at quarterback. Mm-hmm. So he gets carried by his quarterbacks to where he is. Dabo is a lifetime interim guy who now is all of a sudden champion famous and thinks he's responsible for it or God is responsible for him. What I'm telling you is what I saw with his behavior from the quarterback with the quarterback yesterday. I didn't see God in it. Like, I mean, what do you want him to do in that spot? I'm not, I, I'm not I want him to eat the loss, not blame the kid. I want him to eat the loss. He had nothing for Nick Saban yesterday. It was obvious. Alabama was, Alabama was running around calling out the plays. They had no answers. And so the quarterback's already losing and frustrated right. and actually getting hit. And Dabo's on the sideline getting embarrassed in a way that's obvious to all of us. You have nothing. If you don't have that quarterback, you, Dabo, have got nothing for Nick Saban. So what do you do? You turn and yell at the college kid. Right, he yells at Kelly Bryant. But if he makes a couple of boneheaded decisions and bad passes, bad plays, I'm just asking, because what you're a, what's a bit unfair about this is you don't know if Dabo's thinking to himself on the sideline, and maybe he said it after the game, I have no idea. 
hey, I'm out co- I'm being outcoached here. Like Nick Saban's no, just I, better what I'm at tell- this than I, I am. What he I, might be thinking no, that to what, himself. What I am telling you is that that dude got embarrassed last night in front of everybody because Alabama knew everything Clemson was going to do. And because he couldn't stop it, he gets mad at his quarterback. Over it, And the only game they lost this year is because Dabo didn't have his healthy quarterback. That quarterback did everything for him this year. And so it made me really mad to have the Bible thumper behaving that way. Yeah, and essentially he's yelling at his quarterback for not being Deshaun Watson. You know, as if, I mean, nobody's Deshaun Watson. No, but that's the thing. The way you beat Nick Saban's teams is with mobile quarterbacks who are Deshaun Watson. That's the only, that's Manziel. The only losses that Saban has in his career against mobile quarterbacks. And in that game, that's the one weakness Saban has, and Dabo could do nothing with it. Nothing. And that's on him, and he knows it. And so what does he do? He kicks the dog when he gets home from work. It's like, dude, that's not cool. That's not cool. That's not, that's not the stuff they teach you in church. Yeah, but it's the stuff that coaches do, Dan. Oh, but I mean, but what I'm but my point you're is you're asking him to be a different coach than any other coach no, because no, he knows no, the church no, so no, much. No, Stugatz, <laughs> this is actually what I'm asking you if you're a holy man of of spiritual being. This is what I'm actually asking you. Coach the kid, help him. In that situation, yelling at him is not coaching, it's just releasing your frustrations. Like you could tell him that he got something wrong. All the yelling conveying of that Right. Is simply, that is not coaching. It's not leadership. It's just a guy getting steam off his chest on a powerless kid because he can. And and the frustration is not understandable. You just won a national. No, but it is understandable because you were personally getting humiliated by a better coach last night who dragged you because you didn't have Deshaun. Dragged you. And everyone saw it in a way that was really obvious. And I just, I ended up getting bothered by that. You think it's unfair? You think I'm unfair because I am really I, am I think re- you're holding him to a higher standard. For... I, he holds himself to a higher standard, man. He keeps that. telling us that he's a man of God and he's there to lead kids. That's not leadership. Well, uh, it's he, not leadership. He does keep telling us that, but we've seen his antics on the sidelines for years now. I mean, it's I, I'm just trying to separate Ro- how he is Ro- as a football Ro- coach and how he is everywhere else. In grow life. up, coach. Grow up. I don't think it's fair to invoke the the religion. What you're saying is a human thing. You could say that about any coach. There are plenty of religious coaches that aren't as publicly religious as Dabo that yell at their players, and you don't get no. But it bothers me bothered. more when you're when you're wandering around, not necessarily holier than thou, but that you've got answers that others don't, and you have a spiritual being that others don't, and you're always telling all of us. That that is the way to be, and I'm watching your behavior when that happens last night, and I'm like, that ain't the way to be. Like, I don't think anybody thinks that's the way to be just because football says it's okay to be that way, because I'd be fine with it if it was actually coaching. He wasn't helping. How are you helping that kid by screaming at him, embarrassing him, and showing everybody on national television, hey, I'm not to blame here. He's to blame. When I saw it, Dabo, you were to blame for that. You had nothing for a team that had better players than you. Nothing. You had a month to prepare, and if you don't have the best quarterback in rookie quarterback in the NFL, yet you had you couldn't get a slant off. Like they knew everything you were doing. Yeah, I think you're in the minority, though. I think most people see that and are made uncomfortable by it because that's just what coaching is. That's that's actually some of the one of the few times you could actually visibly see what that's not coaching, what coaching is. is. That's not teaching. That's just for, that's just a, a, an immature yeah, man being frustrated. You're isolating one moment there that we all saw. We have no idea how Dabo acts around that kid. And- all the other times. I'm not talking. I'm. Not, I don't want to define him by his worst public moment. I. I'm guessing that Dabo is very kind man to kids. What I'm saying is what he's showing me when the pressure mounts and someone's to blame that he doesn't want the blame, and that's not leadership. I don't think this quarterback's a fragile kid. I think he's a starting quarterback for a major college program and probably has a little bit of Teflon on him in terms of what his coach is just venting well, about. Well, can you guys answer me this? Because help me with this, right? Because one of the things that this presses on for me is I hate when the powerless are abused or when they're bullied. Can you explain to me why it's not any kind of national controversy that Mark Rick, the University of Miami coach, grabbed a referee in a rage? Can someone explain to me why that isn't a huge scandal throughout sports? Because if a player did it, you know good and well we would have been talking about it all week. Explain to Mark Rick. And is it because he's a holy man? Like, what are we doing there? 
Because Mark Rick is a calm person, and I love Mark Rick, but he lost control of his emotions and he embarrassed himself by grabbing the referee, even though he was right, by the way. He was totally right to be angry because he that game got blown on him because a, 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 a holding call was not called that was obvious and should have been called. But when you react that way, why is that not a controversy? It should have been. It should have been. What Rick did was pretty insane. If it happened in the Rose Bowl with everybody's eyes on it, it'd be a talking point today. And I think probably what's happened there is it happened on a Saturday and not a lot of people were paying attention to it. And it got out of the news cycle before it even got in. Well, he, he was penalized for what he did. He was very contrite afterward, and he has a clean enough reputation where there was no baggage well, that leading helps. to that. I, That's oh, the oh, point. Oh, that reputation okay, helps him. But there. what I'm asking you is if you're going to be the holy man and you're going to get the reputation that you are, you get from being the holy man, which is in that situation, oh, that's out of character, then please spend more time when we're watching you in public at times of frustration, when it's time to be a leader and be accountable, blaming someone that is in the mirror instead of, the helpless kid who got you to where you are today after the other helpless unpaid kid won you the championship. The only way to beat Saban is with a quarterback who can run like be grateful to that quarterback that he got you that far Dabo, because you don't deserve to be there based on what I saw from your coaching last night. Don Lebertard. I found this interesting. I thought that you might too. There's good friends and good women. Sometimes both won't do. Stugats. When you're as drunk as you can get, as high as you can be. I can't remember the next line. Da 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 Thank you. This is the Don Lebatar Show with the Stugats on ESPN Radio. Guest on the Dan Lebatar Show appear via the Shell Pennzoil Performance Line. Danny White going to be there in about 15 minutes. He's the athletic director at the University of Central Florida. I hope this dude is mad. Is he inflammatory? Like, is he going to set fire to everybody in college football? I think he announced them. He proclaimed them after their win against Auburn that they were the national champions. They are the national champions. Yeah, Yeah, Danny White is claiming a national championship. Okay, man, let's give it to him. Let him claim it. Let's give it to him. We're saying you and I are saying this guy like we don't know who this guy is. This guy was the quarterback for the Dallas Cowboys many, many years ago. This guy is 36 years old, according to the miscellaneous facts <laughs> that I actually read when they give them to us. Really? I thought it was the uh, the quarterback and the punter for the Cowboys, Danny White. You thought it was the quarterback that I was, was hoping. For the I mean, that's a guy in the, I'm interested in, the, in talking to. In the to. early 80s. Yeah. Or late 70s, maybe. Well, who the hell is this guy, then? He's the athletic director well, of the National Champions. Uh, right. the How National dare he steal Danny White's name? Oh, uh, you know what? Danny White is a uh, a football coach in the Arena Football League. He's the athletic director. The Danny White yeah. I'm talking about, the more interesting Danny White. He anyway, is, he is the, the most interesting Danny White. Is I, I didn't know that. I think so. I yeah. didn't know that Danny White was in Arena Football League. <laughs> <laughs> Get in touch with the show anytime to the one eight hundred Flowers Twitter feed at Levitard Show at Stugat seven ninety at Greg Cody. Starting off the year with a little romance is easy at 1-800-Flowers.com. Right now, when you order a dozen multicolored roses for just twenty nine ninety nine, you'll get another dozen absolutely free to order. It's simple. Go to 1-800-Flowers.com slash ESPN. All right. I've created a bit of a mess here and that now our show has an obligation to go to Orlando, drag my father and a bunch of TV equipment uh, to Central Florida to present this trophy to the University of Central Florida as part of a televised event. And I'm literally the only person who wants to do it. Everyone is coming, kicking and screaming. And now now I'm talking about bringing Highly Questionable up there. What do I do here, Cody? Help me. Please help me figure this out because we're dedicating the show today to the real national champions, the University of Central Florida Golden Knights. It's a righteous idea by you. It's a thrilling idea. What you should do is rent a semi-tractor trailer like a Shaq O'Neal diesel big rig, paint it in UCF Levitone show colors, get your brother to do the artwork, really make a big deal of it. Buy a semi-tractor trailer, which you can buy for like $400,000. You are not helpful. Any good ideas? In any way. Uh, No, just that one. I mean, I'm visualizing it. It would be fantastic. Do you think we can get a college game day type of atmosphere on the campus of the University of Central Florida to celebrate their rightful championship instead of this bogus one that ESPN is force-feeding you people on Monday? <laughs> Perhaps. It's a pretty big deal, the Levitard National Championship. It is, yes. It is. Yes. Yeah. It's a big honor. Yeah. I mean, and it's the it's first ever. ever yeah. Right? Yeah. It's amazing. <laughs> 
<laughs> we have to repurpose our existing fantasy trophy. You know that, right? Who's going to pay for that? Just a it's kind of broken. Yeah, we yeah, can just put duct tape, masking yeah. tape. Yeah. Right over it. I'm, I, I, I'm trying to figure out the way. All right, let, let me just be totally honest with the audience and everybody here. I'm trying to figure out the way to do this for UCF in the most grandiose way possible without me ever leaving Miami. <laughs> hmm. Sort of hinges on you going. I know yeah. that's the have problem. Have them come here. That's how th- have them come here. Yeah. Yes. No. I've actually, yes. It's great here. exposure for I've them. Come yes. here yes. to collect their championship. Yes. Oh, we could do it at the Clevelander pool. Right. Invite Orlando. We, we here. can have a giant celebration, a giant party where the Magic Kingdom comes to us and we celebrate the national championship with UCF. Uh, I, which I said was the best team in the state, but is actually the best team in the galaxy. When I said they were the best team in the state, I was including the professional teams. So we're going to give them an award that they have to travel That's to. That's right. Yeah. yeah. A broken award. Except. A broken trophy. Yeah. This would make a good award. But if, oh, for just, the love of God. What you do is just tape over this. Greg, put, Greg, we're on the radio. Florida. Greg, we're on the radio. Right. Mo- Greg is holding the, up a light. Most, a, we're yes. mostly on the radio, and so when you hold something up, no, nobody right. can see it. Right. Ah, okay. They're, you know, I thought this was simulcast on TV. It is, but it is. you want to talk to the radio audience, not the television I am audience. talking to the radio audience. Well, you didn't describe the trophy that you won. Uh, Greg won the Edwin Pope Media Award. Yeah. It's a, a lifetime achievement yeah, award, essentially, for journalists. Yeah. Let's get back to UCF. He's so infatuated with this damn award, Stugatz. He brings in, like, unbelievable. It's unbelievable. Right. He comes in here with this award, this Edwin Pope. Orange Bowl. Yeah. Well, we were talking about college oh, football. It's an Orange Bowl award. So right. That's what made me think of Let it. Let Dan finish for a second, yeah, though. Sorry. Ward was already here when I came in. You're going to stay with that joke? Go ahead then. Tell the people. No, about, no. I'm tell done. the people about your damn trophy. No, no it's a big oh. honor, Greg. And I think I would like to hear about it. And I think the listeners would. Yeah, I don't think they would. It's Dan Stu and Greg Cody on ESPN Radio.